Go ahead. Thank you, Jen. I do have a question on the bill, but first on energy. When is it that the Biden administration is going to let the thousands of uh, fossil fuel industry workers, whether it's pipeline workers or construction workers, who are either out of work or will soon be out of work because of a Biden EO, uh, when it is and where it is that they can go for their green job. And that is something the administration has promised. Uh, there is now a gap. So I'm just curious when that happens, when those people can count on that. Well, I'd certainly welcome you to present your data of all the thousands and thousands of people who uh, won't be getting a green job. Maybe next time you're here, you can well, present no, that. But you said that they would be getting green jobs, so I'm just asking when that happens. Uh, Richard Trumka, who is a friend, longtime friend mm -hmm. of Joe Biden, says about that day one Keystone EO, he says, I wish he, the president, had paired that more carefully with the thing that he did second by saying, here's where we are creating the jobs. So. There's partial evidence from Richard Trumka. Well, you didn't include all of his interview. Okay. About, Would you like okay. to include the rest? So, so how about this? Uh, the Laborers International Union of North America said the Keystone decision will cost 1,000 existing union jobs and 10,000 projected construction jobs. Well, what Mr. Trumka also indicated in the same interview was that President Biden has proposed a climate plan with transformative investments in infrastructure and laid out a plan that will not only create millions of good union jobs, but also help tackle the climate crisis. And as the president has indicated when he gave his primetime address uh, to talk about the American Rescue Plan, he talked about his plans to also put forward a jobs plan uh, in the in the weeks or months following. And he has every plan to do exactly that. But at, there are people living paycheck to paycheck. There are now people out of job once the Keystone pipe out of jobs once the Keystone pipeline uh, stopped construction. It's been twelve days since Gina McCarthy and John Kerry were here and it's been nineteen days since that EO. So what are these people who need money now? When do they get their green job? Well, uh, the, the president and many Democrats and Republicans in Congress believe that investment in infrastructure, building infrastructure uh, that's in our national interests uh, and that boosts the U.S. economy, creates good paying union jobs here in America and advances our climate and clean energy goals are something that we can certainly work on doing together. And he has every plan to uh, share more about his uh, details of that plan in the, in the weeks ahead. If you were looking for the most bad faith question that's been asked of White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki thus far, you just got it. With Peter Ducey asking now that Biden canceled the construction permit for the Keystone XL pipeline, where the people who would have had jobs can go for their green jobs. Now, a few things here. First off, this idea that Biden's executive order would get rid of thousands of jobs. What Ducey is referring to is a claim by the energy company behind the pipeline, TC Energy, that projected it would hire 11,000 people. Whereas right now, there are only 1,000 people whose jobs were lost, while the other 10,000 were future positions. In other words, we're talking about the pipeline pipeline company's own projections about jobs that largely don't yet exist. And so when Ducey refers to the thousands of jobs lost, he's effectively acting as a spokesman for this pipeline company and criticizing Biden for purportedly getting rid of jobs without acknowledging that those jobs are imaginary. Second of all, as far as those 1,000 jobs go, while every job is important and we should always strive for full employment, the idea that Biden is going to upend his entire clean energy agenda for those 1,000 pipeline jobs is absurd. Biden literally ran on eliminating this pipeline's construction permit. This isn't a surprise to anyone. And when you get elected by 81 million Americans to enact your agenda, then it's not exactly breaking news when you go ahead and enact your agenda. Ducey even couches his argument in the idea that the Biden administration promised to replace jobs lost with green jobs, which Ducey obviously took literally to mean that Biden was going to personally replace every job lost with a different green job, the way you would exchange a t-shirt in one size for a different size. And look, it is beyond clear that this is in bad faith. The broader point here is that fossil fuel jobs that do not comport with our stated energy goals are going away, and they'll be replaced by jobs in the faster growing and better paying sector of renewables. That doesn't mean that each person will show up on Monday and be handed a new job at the jobs counter, it means that old jobs will go away and they'll be replaced with new ones that, again, will be more plentiful than pipeline jobs and higher paying than pipeline jobs. Kind of like how we no longer have people manufacturing fax machines and beepers and VHS players because they went away and they were replaced by newer technology. That is how society works. That's how it's always worked. We certainly didn't throw a national temper tantrum to save fax machines and there's no reason to do it with a pipeline. 
The fact is that ending our reliance on fossil fuels will pave the way for exponentially more union jobs. Renewables is an exploding industry, while fossil fuels is a dying one. And trenching our reliance on fossil fuels only makes it more difficult to transition to better, higher paying, longer lasting jobs in renewables. People like Peter Ducey who insist on taking a short sighted view of this are the same people who would be responsible for less jobs in the future. So if he's actually concerned about jobs and not just launching bad faith attacks to score points with his base, he'd recognize that less reliance of fossil fuels and more focus on renewables will ultimately net Americans more jobs. The fact is that renewables is the fastest growing sector in the country, with the US Bureau of Labor Statistics forecasting that America's two fastest growing jobs through 2026 will be solar installer and wind technician, both set to experience approximately 100% growth. And that's on top of the fact that clean energy jobs already outnumber fossil fuel jobs by a staggering three to one ratio. And those clean energy jobs offer significantly higher wages than the national average and are widely available to workers without college degrees. It can amount to an almost 20% pay raise. But sure, let's delay all of that because Peter Ducey wants to save a few Keystone XL jobs. Got it. But consider why Fox News might be so hellbent on backing fossil fuel companies. It's not because they're speaking on behalf of Americans. 77% of this country believes that it's more important for the US to be developing alternative energy sources like wind and solar than to produce more coal, oil, and other fossil fuels. So who are they speaking on behalf of while shilling for fossil fuels? Oh right, Republican politicians. According to Open Secrets, here's where oil and gas donations go to, split by party. Notice any particular difference here? And so in effect, you have Fox News, which is just Republican operatives operating under the guise of a news organization, propping up fossil fuel companies to help the politicians whose re-election campaigns are funded by those same companies. This is nothing more than millionaire anchors on a network owned by billionaires supporting the campaigns of millionaire politicians who rely on billionaire CEOs to get them to the next cycle and then those CEOs in turn benefit from legislation that those millionaire politicians pass. That is the system that Steve Ducey is entrenching under the guise of populism. And finally, one last point. Ducey self-righteously points out that people are living paycheck to paycheck, which is quite the line from a Fox News guy, considering that network made it their entire life's mission to downplay the dangers of coronavirus while kowtowing to Trump. And by doing so, it allowed the virus to explode throughout this country, leading to a staggering 20.5 million jobs lost at the peak of the pandemic. 20.5 million jobs lost because of a mismanaged response aided and abetted by Fox News specifically, and this guy has the audacity to sit in the briefing room and grandstand about 1,000 lost jobs. How about an apology for helping exacerbate a crisis that left 20 million people out of work first, and then we can have a conversation about the Keystone XL pipeline. But of course, all of this having been said, Peter Ducey and his cohorts aren't looking to come at this from a place of good faith. His goal was to nail Jen Psaki with a gotcha question or bait her into arguing with him so that Fox News could turn her into a villain. But not only did she refuse to take the bait, but it's Ducey who looks like a fool in the end, shilling for fossil fuel companies while the rest of the country is ready to move forward. While you're here, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I take a deep dive into the top stories of the week, and I also interview major players in the world of politics, like Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Pete Buttigieg, Katie Porter, Al Franken, Cory Booker, Jamie Harrison, Mary Trump, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.